Median nerve injury. The median nerve can be compressed at many points along its course. About 1% of people have a supracondylar spare on the medial side of the humerus, about 5 cm from the epicondyle. The nerve runs deep to the supracondylar spare and the strathers ligament, which may cause entrapment of the nerve. What is Struthers ligament? It is a ligament that bridges the spur to the medial epicondyle. The median nerve usually passes under the ligament along with the brachial artery or its inner branch. Clinically, the patient will experience pain, gradual hand weakness, and sensory loss in the median nerve distribution. The patient may not be able to perform the OK sign. The NL test may be positive. The test is considered positive if symptoms of tingling worsen while tabbing on the spur. Occasionally, the spur can be felt. How about pronator teres syndrome? Pronator teres syndrome is a compression of the median nerve at the level of the elbow, which occurs more in females. In the forearm, the median nerve runs between the two heads of the pronator teres muscle, and then it lies between the flexor digitorum superficialis and the flexor digitorum profundus muscles. Pronator teres syndrome could be associated with medial epicondylitis. The principal symptoms of numbness in the radial three and a half fingers, as well as thinner weakness, may be mistakenly attributed to carpal tunnel syndrome, but it is not a carpal tunnel syndrome. Potential sites for entrapment of the nerve include. The most common cause is due to compression of the median nerve between the two heads of the pronator teres muscle. It occurs in people who perform repetitive, forceful pronation of the forearm. Compression due to thickening of the bicipital aponeurosis. The aponeurosis crosses from lateral to medial over the antecubital fossa and it may irritate the median nerve. Compression of the nerve from the fibrous arch of the origin of the flexor digitorum superficialis. Clinical presentation. Parathesia in the lateral three and a half fingers may occur with compression of the median nerve at the elbow region. Symptoms are similar to carpal tunnel syndrome, but the symptoms are worse with rotation of the forearm. Patients will complain of dull aching pain over the proximal forearm with no night symptoms. Pain is usually worsened by repetitive or forceful pronation, and you can find tenderness on palpation of the pronator teres muscle. The median nerve gives off a palmar cutaneous branch before entering the carpal tunnel. So sensory disturbances over the palm of the hand occur due to involvement of the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve, and this occurs proximal to the carpal tunnel itself. Here you can see the palmar cutaneous nerve arises before the carpal tunnel. Sensory disturbance in this area indicates median nerve problems proximal to the carpal tunnel. This differentiates between carpal tunnel syndrome and pronator teres syndrome. This is an important point. There are no specific provocative tests used to localize the site of compression that produce the pain and distal parathesia. In pronator syndrome, 
The null sign at the rest will be negative. Failing test will be negative. Median nerve compression tests are negative at the carpal tunnel. However, there will be a positive tenel sign at the proximal forearm. Also, there will be an abnormal sensation in the palm of the hand. The pronator teres muscle can be assessed as the cause of the median nerve compression. Resisted forearm pronation with the elbow extension will test for compression at the two heads of the pronator teres muscle. The patient forearm is held in resisted pronation and flexion. While remaining in a pronated position, the forearm is gradually extended. Compression of the median nerve can also be tested by Resisted elbow flexion with forearm supination indicates compression of the median nerve at the bicipital aponeurosis. The bicipital aponeurosis is a hot topic nowadays where some doctors release that under local anesthesia. The resisted contraction of the flexor digitorum superficialis to the middle finger that will test compression at the flexor digitorum superficialis arch. How about carpal tunnel syndrome? The clinical picture of carpal tunnel syndrome, usually the patient will complain of pain, numbness, and parathesia in the palmar aspect of the thumb, index, and long finger. It is at the median nerve distribution. Symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome occur more at night. These symptoms wake the patient up from sleep, causing the patient to shake the hand in an attempt to resolve these symptoms. Positive tenel sign. Percussion of the volar wrist crease produces electric sensation distally to the fingers. Phelan test is usually positive. How phelan test is done? It is done by flexing the wrist for 60 seconds. This will increase the carpal tunnel pressure temporarily and produce the symptoms. If the test is positive, the patient will have numbness and tingling in the hand and wrist. Positive compression test, Dorkin's test, this is the most sensitive test. The examiner places even pressure with two thumbs directly over the patient's median nerve in the carpal tunnel for about 30 seconds. Reproduction of symptoms in the distribution of the median nerve means that the test is positive for carpal tunnel syndrome. A self-administered hand diagram is extremely helpful it is the most specific test for carpal tunnel syndrome. The patient should highlight the areas where they are experiencing the symptoms. Patient may complain of thinner atrophy, weakness, or clumsiness of the hand. The patient history and examination is an indication for carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a clinical diagnosis. The nerve is much like a truck passing through a tunnel. The nerve should be able to pass through the tunnel with ease and without friction. So if the tunnel is narrow, then the nerve cannot pass. And if you want the nerve to pass, then widen the tunnel. And we widen the tunnel by cutting the transverse carpal ligament, as you see here in this example. Anterior interosseous nerve injury. A patient with a high median nerve injury or anterior interosseous nerve injury can have two signs. The Benedictine sign and also inability to do the okay sign. So how do you do the Benedictine sign? 
The patient with a complete anterior interosseous nerve injury or a high median nerve injury will be asked to make a fist. The first digit and the second digit will have difficulty in flexing. The other digits, four and five, will flex. The third digit appears weak. The hand will assume the Benedictine sign or sign of benediction, which is the position during hand blessing. Hand of benediction is different from under claw hand. Under claw hand refers to damage to the under nerve and is seen when attempt to extend all digits, leaving the four and five digits flexed. So what is the OK sign? Ask the patient to touch the tip of the thumb and the index finger together. If the distal pharynx cannot flex because of weakness of the anterior interosseous nerve, then the patient cannot do the OK sign. That is because of weakness of the flexor pollicis longus and the flexor digitorum profundus. This complication is known to occur in subracondylar fractures in children. The anterior interosseous nerve arises from the median nerve about 4 to 6 cm distal to the elbow, which is about one third down the forearm. The anterior interosseous nerve exits from the anterolateral aspect of the median nerve. The anterior interosseous nerve runs between the radius and the ulna on the interosseous membrane between and below the muscle of the flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor pollicis longus. It supplies three muscles which lies in the deep compartment of the forearm. It is the flexor digitorum profundus, the flexor pollicis longus, and also the pronator quadratus. The flexor digitorum profundus for the index and long finger is supplied by the anterior interosseous nerve. The medial part of the profundus muscle is supplied by the ulnar nerve. The profundus have dual innervation. The anterior interosseous nerve passes dorsal to the pronator quadratus with the anterior interosseous artery and provide innervation to the volar wrist capsule. So the terminal branches of the anterior interosseous nerve innervates the joint capsule. Some more important points. Patient with Martin Gruber connection of the median nerve or the anterior interosseous nerve to the ulnar nerve at the forearm. This patient may present with intrinsic muscle weakness. Also, the anterior interosseous nerve palsy should be differentiated from acute brachial neuritis. Patient may have pain in the affected extremity. Another point in anterior interosseous nerve entrapment, the median nerve conduction study result will be normal. However, the needle EMG of the anterior interosseous nerve will be abnormal. It is a motor nerve and not a sensory nerve.